Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Mermaid's Message in a Bottle, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Chardonnay. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, fluorescent pink, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, and I have deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number seven round brush, and I have a number one round brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up a little bit as well. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy palette that I use and the brushes and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's there for you, but there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using brown, blue, yellow, and white to create my sky. I'm gonna have my sun either rising or setting over on the bottom right of my horizon line. I'm gonna bring my sky just past my halfway point. So if this is about my halfway point, I'm gonna come about an inch below that. So what I'm gonna to do to start is I'm just gonna kind of mark that um, area where I want the horizon to go or where I want my sky to stop. So I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of blue on my brush. I'm gonna find my halfway point and then I'm just gonna kind of make myself a little bit of a mark right below it. You may be able to use your brush as a measuring tool to make the mark at the same, si the same height on the other side. And my brush looks like it's exactly the perfect height. So I'm just gonna go to the other side, make myself a mark. That's just gonna give me a visual stopping point so I don't go farther than that. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with blue, brown, and white on my brush at the same time and I'm going to be doing kind of a left to right, long crisscrossy type brush stroke to get my sky on here. I'm gonna have my sky getting lighter and lighter as it comes down to, towards the horizon, and then I'm gonna have it the lightest here. So I start pretty dark at the top, and then I may never pick up blue or, and or brown again. I may just pick up white and it will get naturally lighter as it comes down towards the horizon. If I feel that there's areas that I want a little bit darker, I can certainly pick up those colors. But right now I just loaded my brush with just white without washing my brush. And what's gonna happen is my sky will naturally get lighter and lighter as it comes down. And if you want extra spots that look like a cloud going by, you can almost paint around it, pick up a little bit of white and get that spot to be a little bit lighter if you want to. That's going to just make your sky look like you've got some, you know, nice summer clouds just kind of drifting by. And I don't use a ton of paint during this process, but I do want to make sure that I can get the paint to blend together. So I do tend to overlap my sections with one another and then that way it will allow that gradient to have a nice natural kind of um, transition down towards the bottom of the canvas. 
And again, right now I'm just picking up white, which what's happening is I am unloading the, um, the blue and the brown off of my brush. It's just naturally working its way off of my brush. And then I'm gonna get it the lightest down here in the right hand corner. I haven't picked up yellow yet. I'm waiting to add that to where I'm gonna have my, um, my sun up here at the horizon. So right now I'm just letting those other colors just kind of work their way off of my brush. And you can see I kind of go back and forth into previous sections as they're drying. This helps me to get a nice, um, a nice soft look to it. So you can certainly do the same if you'd like to. And if you wanna lighten up any area or darken up any area, you're more than welcome to do so. You can see I'm working my way down towards that lightest part of the canvas so that way I don't um, have to kind of pedal back into the dark area if I, if I don't feel the need to. So I'm just kind of getting this area the way that I want. I'm reloading my brush with just white again. So you'll see that it's gonna start to get nice and light down in this right hand corner. I'm almost going for white at this real, you know, bottom, bottom section. But if you don't achieve 100% white where you want that sun to go, it's okay. You can certainly tweak it as it dries and um, end up adding a little bit more white on top of it once it dries. And once we put the dark water on, it'll look really bright anyways. So I've got my lightest area down in through here, just kind of working this paint out. And you can see I didn't do, or you know, concentrate too hard on making a really perfect horizon line. We'll get that to, to work its way out when we work on the, um, on the water. But now that I've got this here, I've got my lightest spot in through here. If you feel like you still have a ton of blue on your brush, you'll want to wash it before you start adding yellow. I have a little bit, but I have un not too much, so I'm not worried. If I had a lot of blue and I picked up yellow, I'm gonna have a big green sky. I don't mind a little green in my sky, but I don't want it all to be green. But I feel pretty safe at this point. If you have a lot of blue, you'll wanna wash your brush. I'm gonna pick up just a touch of yellow and a little bit of white. This is gonna add my glow around my sun. I'm gonna have my sun maybe about three inches wide and I'm just gonna kind of work this into the sky around where I want my, my sun to be. So you might want your sun to be in a larger or a smaller spot, it's totally up to you. And I'm just lightly kind of working it into the surrounding paint. And if you feel that you want more or you wanna add some of that pink into your sky, feel free to get this into whatever whatever way you want to. Um, and then we are going to be using this same big brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful sky on here, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the water. I'm gonna be using my large brush and the colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I am actually gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. I want this to look like, at least down in through here, kind of shallow water. So I'm gonna have it on the darker side. It's also, you know, set in shadows and all kinds of stuff. So I'm having it really dark at the bottom and it will get lighter and lighter as it gets toward the top and the lightest in through here. We will, just so you can kind of plan in your head as you're doing this, we are going to be adding extra bits of highlights on top of the water later. So if you don't get this as light and as bright as you want, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll end up adding those, those nice twinkly highlights on it later. So I do wanna caution you that black can very easily take over the painting or the take over the other colors. So don't use a lot of black. Use it probably only on the first scoop and then don't use it again. So I'm gonna start with black, brown, and a touch of blue on my brush. And this is gonna start me at the bottom and it's gonna be really nice and dark. And then I don't wash my brush, so I am going to, it'll stay dark until that black 
gets off of my brush. And I'm gonna go a little bit lighter over in this area over here, just because I don't have, and you know, the black is working its way off. And as I go up, I'm gonna be picking up blue and brown. And then as I get towards the top, I'll start using a little bit of yellow, which is gonna give it a greenish appearance, which I'm totally cool with in the water. So I'm just gonna kinda of keep going with my blue and brown at this point. And then right up here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna start using a little bit of yellow without washing my brush. So you're gonna see it's gonna to start to get lighter and greener as we go into this area. And I'm just using a long left to right brush stroke as I get over towards this right hand side, I am still using blue and green right now, and I'm gonna start to use some white in a second here, but I really just kind of wanna get this up in through here. I do wanna also give myself a semi-clean horizon, so before I start going white, you know, a lot lighter in through here, I'm gonna just take my brush and just kind of rub it up at that horizon. If you want to have a really cleaner, kind of horizon line. I'm gonna, you can put white, yellow, and blue on your brush. You can remeasure or remark kind of that top spot and here, and then it, you can connect them by just doing one kind of continuous line like this. It will be a little bit on the darker side, which is great because that's gonna add nice contrast against the sky. And then once you've got your, um, your line on there, then you can just kind of finish up that water. I did end up I'm going a little bit faster than just sitting here and going slow, but you can certainly go at your own speed. I think I need a little more paint on my brushes, what'll make me go a little bit faster. There we go. And I just am gonna connect my, my line over here. And I went a little light on that horizon line, but that's okay. A little light in color, I should say. There we go. And then I'm just gonna kind of finish off this area. I might pick up a little bit more yellow and white as I'm underneath the um, sun area. And again, keep in mind that we are going to do the uh, additional kind of twinkles in the, in the water in a little bit. So don't worry if it's not perfectly blended or if it's not a perfect brightness for you but you do want to just make sure that you have a nice good full coverage and then we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step so once you've got your water on here just gonna make sure i've got that the way that i want it there we go you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of, we'll call it the fish part of our mermaid, the bottom half of her body. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you do wanna have your canvas dry. So you know, you could actually take a little extra long break if you want to, or you could sit here and blow on it which might take you a little while, or you could just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it. That, that was my method. So whatever way you need to do, maybe yours is already dry by now, but make sure that at least the water part is dry. So I'm gonna do the base coat of her fish part in like a, like a dark blue, but I don't want it to be really, really dark. I just want it to be kind of like a medium blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cobalt blue and I'm gonna add a touch of brown, a touch of black, and a touch of white. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna just almost become more of a, of a neutral kind of blue, and you can really get it into whatever shade you would like. I'm just adding a little bit more to get it into the color that I want. You can have yours more on the grayer side or more on the bluer side, or if you want it more on the greener side, you could add a little bit of yellow to it. So feel free to make this whatever color you want. Um, I'm using these colors so it's nice and complimentary with the rest of the painting, but you can certainly, you know, have fun with your own color preference. And once, so this is about where I'm going with my color. So once I've got what I've, what color I desire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the shape of her, her body. 
So I'm going to look on my horizon line and I'm going to find about the halfway point and I'm going to make myself a little bit of a mark. Then I'm going to come to the left, maybe about two, two and a half inches and make myself another marker. Then I'm going to come from the center of these two and I'm going to come directly down below them and I'm going to make myself a third mark that's probably, I'd say about maybe two inches from the bottom of your canvas. So that might be a little hard for you to see. I'm going to add a touch of white just so you can, you can visually see it. There you go. Um, and then I'm going to make a third marker that's going to be, I would say maybe about two, two and a half inches below here and about two, two and a half inches to the right of that. So somewhere about here. So I have four markers. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a vertical line coming from here and it's going to go just about down to the same um, distance as here. It doesn't have to be super straight. I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve just to have a little bit of um, shape to the body. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this dot to this dot to this dot. And how I'm going to do that is this is going to be her back, this is going to be her butt, and then this is going to be her knee. So here we go. I'm going to bring this down, maybe bring it in a little bit. I'm going to give her a little mermaid rear end, something like that. I'm going to level it out almost kind of flat down at the bottom almost until I am at the distance of um, what's going to be her front side and then I'm going to start to curve it up to where the where the mermaid knee is going to be. <laughs> I don't know if they have knees or not but I'm going to call it the mermaid knee. So something like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make connect this to I'm going to come up here maybe I would say about a half of an inch to an inch and that's going to it, you want it higher than here so just a little bit higher than there is going to finish out this mermaid knee and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the left hand side of here but maybe a little bit higher so that way it looks like the the tail is going to be coming up in an upward direction I'm going to make a mark here and then I'm going to come down from that maybe about, I would say, an inch and a half somewhere in through there. So this is going to be the start of my tail. I'm actually going to have my tail kind of resting in the shallow water and I don't want it down as far as her rear end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this line somewhere to about here. So not as far as her the bottom of her bum and then I'm going to bring it over to the left and I'm going to curl it up something like this and then I'm about an inch away from my um, horizon line right now then I'm going to just come to the right of that and just kind of thicken this up a little bit into here and then this is going to come swooping up and meet that, that part that comes out of her body something like that I'm going to make myself a couple of little um, fun tail mermaid fins going in through like this. And you can have so much fun with these on the, on the edge here. I'm going to do this and maybe this is going to, I almost like them looking like, like feather kind of um, shapes, but you can certainly make yours whatever way that you want. I'm giving some little, some little edges here, something like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to color these sections in with this um, same paint, the same color. So I don't really need to do any specific brush stroke to get to color in these sections. I just want to make sure I kind of don't lose this piece in through here. So I want to make sure that, you know, when I'm done painting this section that I still know that this is going to be the front of her or a part of her body. So when you're doing that, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a teeny tiny space between the two or something that I can visually see. And then when I go to paint the, um, 
the fish part up her back, I'm not going to paint it solid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it leaves space for it to almost work its way into the skin color that we're going to do. So I'm doing an uneven line from uh, in almost like a V kind of uh, formation where it's going to end up meeting her skin is going to come here and then I will paint this whole section in. And then we are going to be using this same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got the first layer of her fish part on here, you can wash and dry this. Oh, and if it's streaky, don't worry about it. We got lots of scales and all kinds of stuff that's going to be um, making it so it's not see-through later. So you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on our mermaid skin. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using burnt sienna or I like to recall it rust. And I'm going to give you a couple of markers. We're going to do some shapes and I am going to forewarn you that it's not going to look awesome after this step because it's going to be the, just the base coat. The head is going to look a little funky because I'm making you have the head as big as her hair is going to be later. So her head's going to look quite large after this step. So just giving you that little forewarning that so you don't panic if it looks funky after this step. So I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm taking some burnt sienna. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly up from the middle of um, her back and I'm going to come up maybe about three and a half inches and I'm going to put myself a little bit of a marker. And then I'm going to go directly straight up from that until I am about maybe an inch and a half away from the top of my canvas and make myself another little marker. So this is going to be the top of her back and that's going to be the top of her head. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a uh, just the her back. So I'm going to so your brain doesn't make it too wide. What you can do is you can start by just making yourself a couple of little lines in through here. And it doesn't need to be super straight because the body is going to have form to it so or shape to it. So when you go to do, say, her shoulder, which this one is going to be hidden by her hair. So I recommend trying the left one first, something like that. And then when I go to do the right one, I know I'm also going to have her arm coming down here, so I might end up making this shoulder a little bit bigger when I make her arm, but right now I'm just going to kind of get the shape on there so I have a good starting point. And then once I've got that, now I can just color this middle section in with my burnt sienna and I'm going to kind of overlap it a little bit into that blue just so those two end up really working well together by the time we are done with um, with the full with the full painting. So when you when you do steps where you want things to work together with one another, overlapping them throughout the process, overlapping the colors throughout the process really helps to um, build that information in a in a nice natural way. So that's going to be that section. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from here, maybe about I would say about an inch. And now I'm going to make myself an an oval. So this is going to represent her big hair that we're going to put on later as well as the start of her face. So I don't want this to go out as far as her shoulder. I actually want it to only go out about halfway between here and her shoulder. So if you come up from the shoulder and kind of give yourself a little marker or tell yourself that's about as far as you want it to go, you can just kind of go above that, make yourself a little bit of a mark. And on the back, it really doesn't matter because she's going to have a, a whole bunch of hair that's going to cover everything. So I wouldn't be terribly concerned about the left hand side. Um, I am going to have her head tipped a little bit like she's looking down. So I'm going to bring this, you know, out just a little bit at the top and make sure that this looks well together. We're going to give her a little nose in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of giving myself a nice 
big shape for her for her big head of hair that we're gonna have in a little bit. And I'm just bringing this down, giving myself an area that will be hidden by hair, but it's this, this right side is the most important side. I need to give her a neck. So I'm just gonna go from in through here and just give her a little curved line like that and a little curved line like that. And if you feel like it's too far away or you know something's not working, just go ahead and adjust it. But again, this whole left side is gonna be covered by hair. So don't worry terribly about that. So I do wanna give her a nose and a chin. So I know that the top, like from, I would say two thirds of this is gonna be hair. So I'm just having this bottom right little corner is gonna be her face. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to give her a little nose in through here. That's just kind of looking down or pointed down towards like the sun. And I'm also gonna give her a little bit of a chin coming out in through here. So my, my suggestion is just start small. You can always build it bigger as you know, you feel that you might have made it a little not perfect. And then I just popped out a couple of little tiny lips in through here. And again, I know it looks funky. Right? It looks like a stone figure or something like that, but it'll be all hair later. Trust me. Now I need to give her an arm. So I know that the elbow, your elbow usually comes around your waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right of what I'm going to call this, like her waist in through here, maybe about, I don't know, an inch or so, or maybe a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to consider that like her elbow. The arm comes down from the shoulder. It doesn't go out, you know, and have a big weird spot between it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the body to about here and I'm going to connect these two. I'm really just gonna be doing some um, generic shapes to get it on here, and then I will reshape it in a minute. I want her arm and hand to be holding a bottle out in through here, so this is where I'm gonna put like her hand, and I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bit of a slightly diagonal line, not nothing, nothing too dramatic, something like this. And now I'm just gonna start kind of shaping it. So I'm gonna give her a little bit more of a shoulder so it's more of a downward um, kind of motion to connect to her arm as opposed to an outward motion. So something like this. Then maybe she's got a bit of a little mermaid bicep, something like that. And then this is gonna meet into her elbow and then maybe she's got a little bit of a of a forearm in through here and I'm going to say her wrist is maybe somewhere in through here and then she's got her hand is somewhere in through here and we're going to and those are these are her little fingers in through here that are going to wrap around the bottle and again this is going to you're probably going to tweak this you know a couple times before before this is all said and done, but we're just giving ourselves a nice generic kind of shape right now. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your arm on and your skin on the first layer, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our fish part <laughs> or putting scales on her mermaid tail and body. So what I'm going to do is I want this to look really textured. So I'm going to use my, um, the original, the blue that I used here, I'm going to make lighter, a lighter shade. And then I'm going to be using some of my pink and some of my white. You can also mix your blue and your pink and you'll get a beautiful purple color. But my goal here is I want it dark down here and on the left side or the left side of her back, dark underneath here. And then I want it the lightest over on the side where the sun is. So on this right hand side, on her knee, on the top of here, and over on this right hand side of the fin, I'll be putting a lot of pink and white. 
excuse me, and I'm gonna do it in a nice carefree way. I'm gonna enjoy the process. Most of it's gonna be polka dots. Um, if you find that you've lightened up the back too much, you can always come back with your darker blue or whatever you need to do. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna take my original blue that I had and just add a touch of white to it just to make it a little bit lighter. That's gonna be my lighter version. And then if you did want a darker version, which you could or you can do or not do if we want, you can add just a touch of black to some of it. So you can make varying shades of that blue and that's gonna help you to sell the story of the dimensional element. So I've got the dark one and I'm just going to, I think I need a little bit more of the black. So I'm using that original blue with a little bit of black on my brush and this is getting these little shadowy scales down below. I'll do the same thing over on this bottom side. So I'm gonna work my way from the dark to the light. So I've got black and that original blue on my brush right now. And I'm just getting these, I'll call them the, the scales that are in the shadows on down here. And I really want it to be pretty dark because I want to give it some good um, dimensional elements. So I'm just doing polka dots. You could really do um, more detailed kind of uh, steps and make little lines in between each of the, the scales, but I'm gonna just do this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up that lighter shade that I just created, and I'm gonna start making these additional scale marks is what I'm gonna call them. So something like this, and I am overlapping the sections um, so that way that it looks like it's a transition from light to dark as opposed to just separate sections um, of those colors. And I'm going up in through here with that lighter blue just to give this little bit that's gonna be underneath her hair some information. I'm gonna also bring some of this medium kind of, you know, the, the lighter blue that I did in through here and I'm gonna add those beautiful bright pops of the pinks and white on top in a minute. So I'm doing this all through here. I do want some of this lighter blue in through this section as well. And again, if you feel like you do too much, you can always bring back some of that original color onto it, but I, you can see I am allowing for peekaboo spots of that original color to still show through, so that way it ends up really looking nice and textured. I'm bringing some of this light blue or lighter shade of blue up into my beautiful fin, but I'm leaving some of that original color showing, so again, I can keep that dimensional element to it. And I do wanna make sure that you can see these lighter spots. So if it's not evident, you might need to make yours a little bit lighter. Sometimes it dries a little bit darker than you expect. And if that's the case, you can certainly add a little bit more lightness to it. Now I'm going into my pink. I'm not washing my brush, so you might see hints of purple as I do this. So I went into my pink, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm start, oh, did you see how excited I got about pink? I never knew that I would be excited about certain colors, but I am. When I start adding them to the paintings, like, okie dokie, here comes the life. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Sorry about my excitement sometimes that might be, you know, a little too much. <laughs> and so, I'm just adding this pink. I know that my pink is going to be see-through, so it will dry a little bit darker. But what I'm doing right now is just kind of getting, getting it on here. I still can detect detect that separation between the body and here. I'm watching it because in a minute I'm gonna really elevate that separating point. So I'm still picking up just some of that pink. I'm going along the top portion over here just with some polka dots. I'm gonna go ahead and bring a little bit down the top part of this tail in through here. I think I'm gonna skip in through here because I want that to look like it's inside the water. I'm gonna go over here. And again, you could use a bit of um, blue with your pink and that's gonna make it look kind of on the purpley side. Um, but if you're not using white yet, it will look purple too as it dries, even if you haven't used it with the, um, 
blue on your brush. So I'm just adding little, little streaks of the pink in through here. And now I'm going to start, ooh, I'm excited. I'm gonna start adding um, white and pink to my brush at the same time. And this is gonna start adding that super bright highlight on the knee, the, the um, mermaid knee, as well as down this front side of her mermaid scales. <laughs> and this is where I'm gonna start bringing this into the body part in through here. And now you're gonna start to see that separation between like her waist and her um, knee area. And so again, I'm just kind of using this polka dot type method. You can bring this up further if you feel that that connection point isn't perfect. But again, we'll be, we'll be adding some, some strategically placed pieces of hair later. And so again, I'm just kind of adding these little polka dots. This now is going to show you the separation between her backside to the, um, to the, long tail that she's got that she's sporting and again if you feel like you've gone too much and it's too too bright and you're like oh i just I, it's just too much let it dry for a minute and then you can go ahead and add back some of those original colors but you you know you might want to let it dry for a minute before you attempt that because sometimes when we when we're doing this quick overlapping layering type technique if we're not careful, the paint might start to all blend in together and get a little on the muddled side. So if that starts to happen to you, just kind of back off for a couple minutes, let it dry, and then you can certainly come back in and, and tweak it as much as you want to give it that, um, that illusion that you're going for. And I'm just gonna get this to fade into a little bit more of the darkness over here. So if you feel like it's not quite popping enough. You might need um, to bring that highlighted area a little bit further on this side. And I'm gonna put some streaks in the, in the tail to allow for this, the, the light streaks, the white and the, and the pink, just to allow for some beautiful um, dimensional elements in through here as well. And you can see I'm trying to keep it on that right side or a lot of it on the right side to speak to where that um, the light source is coming from. And again, I'm putting a little bit on this part of the tail because that's what would be hit by the light. And then we are going to be using, let's see, what are we gonna use for the next step? We're actually gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful scales on here and you've tweaked them as much as you wanna tweak them, I might sit here for a couple of more minutes and just kind of play with mine a bit, but you can, you can certainly um, call it on yours or continue to add some little dots wherever you see fit. But once you've got it as far as you want it, we are gonna wash and dry this medium brush and use it for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the shadows in the water. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm using black paint, but you might wanna use black with some blue or some brown. If your water is lighter than mine, you might not wanna go all the way black, but my water's pretty darn dark down at the bottom. So I, I'm using black, I'm going for it. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I really want to have um, a shadow underneath her rear end here. So I'm just adding a little bit of black. I'm going to come up either side of her rear end. And then I'm going to just kind of pull that paint out or rub it out to the sides a little bit. So that way it gives the illusion of her body is casting like a little bit of a shadow into the water below. And I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush so that way I can kind of control what I'm doing here. I also want a shadow underneath this fin so I can kind of just keep going with this uh, particular shadow from behind her. And I want this little piece of the fin to look like, or t the tail to look like it's in the water. So I'm gonna rub some black right on top of it, just a little bit of see-through black. So I'm, I don't have much paint on my brush at all. I just really want that to look like it is underneath that water a little bit. 
I'm going to put a shadow kind of re uh, a shadow of the tail fin in here. We're going to put a reflection as well later, but right now I'm just kind of give the illusion of a little bit of a shadow from it because our light source is over there. So even though we're working with water, you would still it, things cast shadows. So we're going to have reflections and shadows in this particular painting. So I've got something that is in a similar movement. My tail kind of goes up in the air, so I don't need this shadow to go, go all the way along it. And then I'm also going to be putting shadows of waves over in through here. So I'm going to have my waves crashing in. So I want to have um, some shadows in through those waves. So I'm going to just take my brush and I'm going to kind of just add a, a few areas of darkness throughout this whole area in through here. I'm doing it kind of in a diagonal type fashion and I'm not terribly concerned as to how beautiful this is right now. I just am looking for some dark spots so that way when I go to add my waves that are crashing in, I'm going to have the ability to have some dimension in through there. I'm also going to do a little bit of that thought process in through this back water here. So I'm just kind of adding these little shadow ripply kind of marks. And then we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow in your water, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I am doing the outline of my bottle. So I'm going to use my small brush, and I'm going to be using black paint. I'm going to actually be watering down my black paint, so I just have a teeny tiny bit of translucent paint. I do want to have an evident outline for later, so that's why I am using black paint. If you want to use a pencil or something like that, you're more than welcome to do so, but I am just taking my black, putting a couple of drops of water in it, and getting it nice and see-through. So you might after I'm doing the bottle before we finish her skin because you might end up readjusting her hand and her arm and stuff like that once you decide where your bottle is going to go. My bottle is going to be relatively large compared to her. I want it to be a very large message that she is either giving or receiving. <laughs> so my bottle is going to look kind of big compared to her, but it's designed that way. So I want my bottle almost like she's holding it with her arm as opposed to just her hand. So I'm going to have mine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it uh, where her fingers are. So I know that I want the side of it to be coming out her hand somewhere in through here. And I want mine at an angle. So I'm putting mine in a, in a diagonal way. And then I'm going to come maybe about an inch to the left of that and put the other side of the bottle. So my bottle is about an inch wide. Yours can certainly be as wide as you want or as large as you want, as small as you want. But I thought it was going to be neat to have it crossing over into my horizon line. So that's why I'm doing mine here. And then I'm going to have it pretty long. It's going to come maybe close to where her knee is. So I'm going to come over and just continue this line on the other side of her arm, maybe to about here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but it will come down lower because it's at an angle. So I'm going to do something like this. And then I'm going to give it a little curved corners, something like that. So that's going to be the bottom of my bottle. And now the top of my bottle, I think I want to have, you got to go straight from the center. So straight, 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 straight. So I'm going to have mine somewhere about here. I marked it over there, but I guess I'm off from my mark a little bit. So let me just erase that little mark there. <laughs> and then once you've figured out where you want, this is where my cork is going to go. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a little horizontal line like that. But I want to bring the sides of my bottle up as high as I want before I start adding the curves and details to the cork and the top. Otherwise, you're kind of shooting at a, a moving target. So what I'm going to do, I know how high it is, so now that gives me a visual gauge. So I'm going to just continue this line in a similar angle. I want this to cross over my horizon a little bit, so something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. 
and I need it to go as equally high as that side if it was standing straight up, so something like that. And then I can start to curve, I can curve like this, and then I can put the neck of my bottle on something like this. I know that's where my cork is gonna be, so I think I'm gonna close the top in through maybe, I don't know, maybe about here, put my cork on, something like that. And again, I'm just kind of doing this like little sketchy outline. You could certainly go more in detail with yours at this point, but this is all I'm gonna do for my first step. I'm gonna use my small brush for the next step as well. So once you've got your outline of your bottle, you can wash and dry, as I'm just tweaking my little top here, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm finishing her face. I'm gonna be using a small brush and I'm gonna be using pink, burnt sienna, maybe a little yellow, white, and black. So I am just giving the hints of her facial features. I'm not going to town with any major detail. I just wanna add a little highlight on her nose, maybe a couple of cute eyelashes coming out, maybe a little bit of rosy in her cheek. So I'm not gonna be terribly concerned about making this perfect, but I do wanna make sure it looks fully painted and that I don't have any streaks of you know unpainted um, canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my burnt sienna and maybe a little yellow and white and just make myself a little bit of a, a, a touch lighter of a skin color just so I have a nice base for, for the face. So something like this, just so it looks nice and finished as opposed to uh, you know this other burnt sienna that we had on there that was a little bit um, probably streaky and didn't, doesn't look very finished. And I'm just adding this thin little layer on top of what's gonna be the face. And then once I've got that on there, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, let's see, let's go a touch of pink. I didn't wash my brush, I'm just adding a touch of pink and I'm gonna give her a little bit of a pink cheek in through here so that pink will just illuminate her, her skin a little bit in through there. You could even do it on the nose, but I'm gonna put a brighter spot on her nose in a second here. So once I've got her rosy cheek, I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. I didn't wash my brush, and I'm gonna highlight the tip of her nose or the bridge of her nose, the end of her nose, something like this. And if you need to reshape it, now's the time to do it. This is just, again, just giving the little illusion of a sun-kissed nose in through here. And again, you can certainly reshape it if you want to. This is just, you know, telling the story that it's being lit up by the sun. And you could certainly do the same thing with the chin, but I think I'm probably gonna have my chin hidden by some hair. So you could certainly, you know, add anything to the lips or anything, but the nose is the main thing for me because I want it to look like it's just poking out of her hair. And then if you want, I just added a touch of black to my brush and I'm gonna add a couple of little um, eyelashes just above her nose, just kind of almost just the hint of some pretty mermaid eyelashes just kind of coming out like that. And we are, once you've got your face done, we are going to, and you can tweak it as much as you want. I almost just put a separating part between her lips, but that's just too much detail. I don't even need that. Um, so we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. I'm taking that away. I just want it to be subtle. There we go. Um, we're gonna use the small brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get right in. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're finishing our bottle. So we're gonna be putting the little piece of paper on the inside and we'll put some, we'll color our cork and put some strategically placed reflective lines throughout the piece of glass and it'll look nice when we're done. So I'm gonna be using brown, white, yellow, black, pink, and purple. 
So I'm using all the colors except for rust, <laughs> which I guess suppose you could use that too, but I'm not gonna use it, I don't think. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna build it from the inside out. So I'm gonna build my piece of paper. So I'm using white and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna put my rolled up piece of paper somewhere, let's see, I think I wanna start it at the bottom so I know that I'm putting it at a good angle. So I'm just gonna kind of put it wherever I want it to be within this um, bottle. I'm gonna bring it on the other side of her arm, something like this. And I'm just using brown and white at the same time on my brush. So it's gonna give it like a nice wrinkly kind of weathered effect. And then I'll put a little highlight and shadow to make it look even more um, realistic. So that's my brown and white. And then what I'm gonna do, I'll pick up just brown without washing my brush, and I'm gonna put some dark brown down this left-hand side, like that. Then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some white paint, and I'm adding this bright highlight over on the right-hand side. And I'm just doing these little streaks just to make it look like it's wrinkled and stuff. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some black paint to give it a little piece of a um, string or something that's tied, tying it together, something like that. And it's gonna be like a little wiggly, ropey thing, something like this. And to give it a little dimension, wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a touch of white and add a bit of a little bit of a of a highlight on top of that rope thing so it looks a little dimensional like that. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I am picking up yellow and I am painting a base coat on my um, cork. I am painting on top of my, my outline. Now I'm gonna pick up a touch of brown for a little shadow on my cork on that left kind of side. And I'm just gonna kind of make it messy because I know corks have texture in them. Wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some white paint to add a little bit of some highlight on my cork and to add some texture to it. And this is where if your outlines for that particular object were a little clunky, you can just kind of um, make adjustments with that. And then let's see, what am I gonna do next? So next what I'm gonna do is I am going to be adding reflective highlights along the bottle. So I'm gonna first, well actually, actually, I take that back. I wanna add a little bit of detail up at the top. I'm gonna put some um, black and brown on my, on my brush just to give this top part a little bit more detail on the actual bottle itself. So just something like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I, so I have that little ripply edge to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, white wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up white paint and this is gonna be the reflective streak. So this can be reflecting anything. It can be reflecting the sun. It can be reflecting the colors in her body, it can be reflecting the water, it can be reflecting anything. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be adding these bright, I'm gonna start with white, and I'm just gonna kind of add these streaks down wherever I want. I think I need something in through here just to get this, um, the information or the, the shine on these various sections of it. And it doesn't just have to be white. So I'm gonna, in a minute, I will add the other some other colors from around the rest of the painting, which will help to make this look more like glass. So I am adding some more white along these edges. That really helps to make it look like it's shining the, you know, the, the water or the sun or, you know, whatever else is gonna make it have that shimmery 
glow to it or, or glimmer. So I'm going to bring this down here and maybe I have a couple of little streaks down at the bottom. And again, it doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be white. I'm going to pick up a little bit of pink. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to put a little bit of pink to show that it's reflecting um, what's in her I keep wanting to call it clothing, but it's, I don't know if it's clothing. Maybe it's a mermaid gown. It's a mermaid fish gown. I don't know. I'm picking up some of this blue color that I made, that I have for her as well. And I'm going to put some of that streaking in the bottom of the, of the glass. This also helps to reflect some of the water. Maybe I'll bring a little bit of that up in through here. And you, again, you can really have fun with streaking these colors in as much as you want. I think I'm going to lighten up the top of my cork a little bit just so this looks like it's being hit a little bit more with sunshine. I'm putting yellow and white on my brush right now just to get this to be a little bit more alive up here. And maybe, oh, maybe I'll put a little bit of yellow in my streaking of my glass too, like it's reflecting the sunshine. So maybe we'll do something like this. And again, you can keep having fun with this and tweaking it as much as you want to. We are going to be using, let's say, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your message in your bottle all nice and created, you can um, get your medium brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the arm. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, burnt sienna or rust, yellow, white, and maybe a little pink too. So really what I'm looking to do, I don't really, I'm not concerned about the back, the neck or the head because again, I'm gonna have hair covering all of that, but I am definitely concerned about the shoulder um, and the arm. So I want a highlight and a shadow, and if I need to reposition or reshape um, anything, now's the time to do it. My highlight is gonna be on the side where the sun is, so it'll be on the right side of her skin and possibly a little bit on this top side and on the right of her fingers over here. And then the shadow is gonna be underneath and on the left-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to start with brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna determine where my shadows are gonna be. So I have a shadow back here on the back side of her arm, something like this. And then I also have a shadow underneath her arm, something like this, and underneath her hand. So I really am just using a touch of brown paint on the tip of my brush to get this shadowy part in through here. Um, and then once I've got the shadow on there, now what I can do is I'm gonna transition into the lighter area. So I'm gonna pick up some rust and yellow. So I have rust and yellow on my brush to just kind of get this to start blending with the lighter side of her skin. So I'm just kind of almost putting a second coat on the main area of her, of her skin with the rust and the yellow on my brush. Now I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of white without washing my brush. I'm gonna really just go kind of heavy on into the highlight area. So I'm gonna have it all the way over here touching the edge of her arm up in through here. And it doesn't have to just be a solid line down her arm because her arm has shape to it. So you can really just get it to blend in with the as it comes around her, her back. And it doesn't have to be all the way on the top of her, um, where her collarbone is either. You can, that can be a little bit darker as well. The brightest of the bright part would be right in through here because that's the part that's um, facing the sun. And you might not be able to get it with one shot. I might actually come back and put it, make it a little bit brighter in a second here, but I wanna get these um, highlights started and then I just kind of um, work with blending them in a little bit. So it's gonna be there, it'll be there, it's gonna be on the edges of her fingers in through there. And then once I know or have established where I'm gonna have it, I just start working it into the surrounding area. 
And if you feel like you've gone too far or, you know, you're you're not quite sure about it, just let it dry for a minute and then you can certainly work with it and get it to kind of blend in with the neighboring areas or do a second coat on top of it. Um, it, it doesn't have to be really vibrant, vibrant, but the, the brighter that little highlight is on the side of the sun, the more it's gonna tell the real story of how bright that sun may be. And if the color isn't right for you, or you want to, it to look a little bit more like her face, I just picked up a touch of pink. You can add a little pink hue to it as well, and that's almost gonna make it look a little bit more sun-kissed and have that, um, that summer kind of feel to it, more of like a peachy kind of look, as opposed to just, um, just you know, the, the, the tan skin color. So feel free to just keep tweaking this as much as you want. If the skin is a little bit too dark, you can just always lighten it up or make it into whatever tonal value that you want. And I'm thinking that's looking pretty good and it's gonna look way better when I have her hair on. <laughs> so we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your arm all nice and completed, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our hair. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm just using brown paint. So you may choose to do your mermaid's hair in whatever color you would like. I'm gonna be doing mine in kind of like a dirty blonde uh, type color, so I'm gonna be using brown as my first layer to put all the dark shadows and stuff underneath. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush, brown paint, and I'm gonna start by just kind of doing a loose outline of where I want the hair to fall, and then the middle will just be a whole bunch of squiggle lines, because she's gonna have curly hair too. I might be inspired by somebody I know. So I definitely want to cover a lot of the face, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of the head and I'm going to be bringing this, I want it further out than her nose. So I'm gonna be bringing this out something like this and I'm gonna be bringing it right where I want it to be brought, which is right by her cheek, something like this. And then I'm gonna put a couple of little, um, I, just like little straggly pieces, I guess, coming down in front of her face. So something like this, and I'm gonna have some nice long ones because I think mermaid's hair is kind of wild and, and carefree. So that's what we're gonna, we're gonna give that to our, our, our young lady here. And then I'm gonna have hair all the way down the side and through here. So I'm gonna be hiding a lot of the face and the neck and wherever else I want to hide, I am also going to be bringing it down in through here. So if you come to an area where, you know, you're putting the hair and you're like, ooh, well there's an unpainted area of skin, you can just put some of that brown paint. It will act as like a shadow underneath our lighter pieces of hair that we're doing later. So I want there to be straggly pieces crossing over, but maybe there's a little hints of skin still showing underneath there. Maybe I've got a couple coming down the lower part of her back. And I definitely, on this left-hand side, man, she's gonna have a lot of hair, so I'm gonna, but I don't want it all one continuous um, strand of hair, so I'm going to have mine, I would say coming about halfway out this bump here, so maybe an inch or two past her body. So that's about as far out as I want her hair to come. So as I do this, I'm just gonna kind of do these like squigglies kind of down the side, something like that, and cross them over her fin if I want to, or her tail. And then I'm just gonna start, I wanna have little peekaboo spots in to see the, the sky behind her. So I'm just gonna kind of do these wiggly lines throughout this area in through here. And now the middle is just kind of fill in the blank. So I'm just gonna add brown paint through the whole middle 
of her hair section. So you might see hints of like her other shoulder. You might see hints of her skin underneath. That's awesome. That's perfectly welcome and it will add some extra dimension to it. Um, but that's all, well, I mean, she might need, she might need a couple of little extra pieces coming out in through here. And if the exterior shape of her head isn't working for you, now's the time to kind of tweak it. But again, when we add those beautiful highlighted pieces on in a minute with the dirty blonde kind of color, that will help to, um, get the shape in, in a, in, in a good way too. So once you've got this on here, you can, let's see, we are actually going to use our large brush for the next step. So you can wash and dry your large brush to get ready for the next step and put this one away wherever you'd like to and get ready. All right. So what I'm going to do for the next step is I am going to be finishing the water. I'm going to be using my large brush and I'm going to be using probably every color on my palette because my water is going to be reflecting what it sees around it. So I am going to be doing the reflection of her and the bottle and then I'm going to put on some whip, ripply waves and maybe some little splashes by her, her tail. So as I do this, I'm going to be doing the reflective colors first, and then I'll add the waves on top. When I add the reflective colors, the best tip I can give you is never have a ton of paint on your brush at one time, because you only need a little hint of whatever color you're reflecting in order to sell the story of this being water. Um, you don't need it to look like a mirror image. You're just really looking to give the illusion that that water is taking on whatever colors are above it. My water is going to be ripply, so it, my reflection can be ripply. I'm going to start with a little bit of my skin color, and I know I'm going to have um, some lighter colors in her hair too, but... I'll probably, I'll add that as well, but I'm not going to go terribly overboard with the, with the colors that I'm putting in the water. And they're going to be, we don't have much room to do it either. So I'm going to take a little bit of some skin color, which would have been my rust and my yellow and my white and maybe some pink or something, something that's similar to what I've used up there. And I'm going to come down below and really what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of dusting in a little bit of the color that I see above. So I think I need a little bit more of my rusty color here just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then I know my I'm going to have my water coming in a ripple around here. So I'm just adding some little hints of the color that I know is going to be within her. Her hair is going to have a lot of lighter spots to it so I just picked up a little bit more white because I know that that's going to have some some lightness to it this is going to reflect her hair up in through there I need her arm to be reflected somewhere in through here so I'm just going to add a bit of that skin tone over in this direction and I want something to resemble the bottle. So it, at any time, you can also wash and dry your brush. Like right now, I want to do a little bit of a, um, an illusion of the bottle. So I just wiped my brush off or washed and dried it. I'm going to put just a little kind of streak in an opposite direction or in the reflective direction to say, oh, here's the bottle. So you can really just sell the story of it being a reflection by just adding the hint of um, something like that. I'm going to pick up some pink and blue to give um, some reflection of her her knee in through here. So I just had a little bit of pink and blue and I'm just kind of adding it into the water in through here. Then maybe I'll put there's some pink and blue here. I know that this was the shadow of my fin, so that would be a great place for me to put the colors from the fin. So something like that, something like this. I've got a little bit in through here, so maybe just a little hint of that in through there. This could go over here. So 
you can see I'm just kind of looking to see where those colors are. I think I need a little bit more blue or that original blue just in through here to sell this story a little bit more. And then once I've got my reflective colors on there, now I can start adding my, my ripples into it. So I'm gonna be using mostly my colors from my water, but I will be using a lot of white up in through here where my, where my sun is to get that, um, that sun to beam onto the, the water. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I can get some white up in through here. I don't need much. I'm just going, I washed and dried my brush. I'm just going right on the edge. Now I have my bottle to contend with. It seems to be perfectly placed right in the middle <laughs> of my sun. So you can certainly, yours might be in a different position, but I'm gonna put some little white streaks left to right. I'm even gonna put them right in my bottle. And if I needed to make any um, little corrections on my bottle after that, I can certainly come back and make any little corrections or modifications that I want, but I really want some bright streaks of um, ripples coming in towards my in towards my land in through here. So I definitely want to have um, them represented in this area. So I'm not concerned about my bottle. I will I'll make any little corrections I want. And then as I come in through this area in through here, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. And I do a weird um, motion with my hand to push my, my waves. Oh, I guess I need a little bit more. I'm pushing my waves into that shadow like that. So I just put a little bit, I need more. Hold on. I, I, I'd rather be shy on it and have to go back for more than to, not have, or than to have too much. So I added a little bit more paint to my brush and now I'm just pushing my shadows and, or my ripples into those little shadow marks that I made earlier. And you can certainly have fun with making your ripples whatever way you want, and they can be as dramatic as you want or as subtle as you want, but I'm just kind of taking my brush, I use the, the corner of it, and I'm just kind of pushing them into that area. Yeah, that's looking good. And I want it to kind of blend out into that water. And as I come around this side, this is gonna be a little bit darker. So I am going to maybe pick up a touch of my blue with it. So I have white and my blue, and I want this to almost look like it's a, like rippling around her bum. So I'm gonna do it almost in like a circular kind of ripple fashion. And I put those shadows on there earlier, so I'm kind of following those shadowy areas that I'm putting my ripple above them, which is um, making the, the shadow appear even more dramatic. So something like that, that's working. And then what I'm gonna do, again, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just kind of adding the illusion of this. I think I'm gonna um, add a touch more of the darker blue back here. And again, if you have too much paint on your brush, just go ahead and wash it or um, pick up some of the darker color or whatever. And I think I need a little bit more of my darkness over here. Yeah, there we go. And just giving the, these ripples some shape. And I'm going to put some splashes and stuff right where my tail is. So now I'm picking up a little bit of white and I'm going to get some little splashes to come up in through this area. And this doesn't just have to be done with white. You can certainly do little splashes with your watercolor as well. You could pick up some of your um, the darker watercolor and start the, the splashes that way and then add a couple of bright, oh, I guess I had some darker paint on my brush, um, but this is gonna show you exactly what I was about to tell you. You can put some of your watercolor on there the colors within your water and then pick up a little bit of white and that's going to make if you add it to that it gives it a ton of dimension so you can certainly have fun with playing with the intensity of the splash by utilizing the actual colors that you've 
put within your water. So that, that adds that extra bit of dimension to it. And then once you've got, yeah, that's looking fancy. Once you've got that, I think I'm done. <laughs> once you've got that all set, we're gonna use that medium brush for the next step. So you can just get that out, get ready, and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing her hair. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. My colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, white, and yellow, and maybe a little of the rust, but again, you can make the hair whatever color you want. The best suggestion or tip that I can give you here is work from the dark to the light. So if you want some really bright highlights to show that the sun is glistening off of her hair, hold back and wait to use the white until the end. So use varying shades of your hair color before you put those bright, bright white highlights. So don't use white too soon. Use that as the last bit of highlight. So what I'm gonna do is I have my brown at the ready, so that will be my intermingling color throughout the process. But I wanna make a couple of shades lighter than that to build my way to the brightness on the ends. And again, I want this to be kind of like a dirty blonde color. So I'm gonna use my yellow, my white, and some brown, because I know brown is my base color and some rust to pre-mix myself, almost like a golden kind of color. So think of like Goldilocks, her golden hair. So you can, you know, come up with whatever, whatever shade works for you. That, that's looking pretty good to me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the building process of my hair. So again, I wanna keep some semblance in the front of her head, but the rest of it I'm, I'm totally cool with. So I'm gonna just kind of start to add these bits of golden hair and intermingled with my base color that I did initially. So I don't have to paint over the entire base coat that I did the first time. This is just really adding um, additional pieces of hair. So don't feel like you have to full on cover the entire um, the entire head again. This is really just kind of getting additional pieces of hair. So you can see here, as I'm just doing almost like a single strand at a time, I'm just getting her front portion to kind of come back like this. And then maybe these pieces kind of fall in this direction. Maybe yours is just like a continual wave. You can really um, have fun with it. Maybe yours is straight hair. So you can build it whatever way you want, but I want mine to have a little bit of, um, of I don't want to call it order because it is kind of curly hair, but definitely I want to make sure that it has the shape on it that I um, am, am attempting to achieve. So I've got this in through here. So that's looking pretty good to me. And now I'm going to start building some of these um, exterior kind of curls, I guess, that are gonna come down her back, something like this. And again, I'm utilizing this lighter color to just really um, build a, a nice textural effect. And her, I'm having her have hair everywhere. I mean, it's super long. It's mermaid hair. It can be as long as you want. It can come all the way down to the water. You have fun. It can strategically be used in places to cover sections that might not have worked out exactly as you wanted them to work out. But once I've got, you know, almost this medium tone on here, then I will start to add either straight white or another um, lighter layer. So I'm really thinking that this is working out pretty well, but uh, I think maybe I'll go one shade lighter, add a couple of those streaks, and then maybe I'll go in for my white, white, super bright highlights in a second. So I'm just making another tone lighter and you can, again, if yours is working out, just go for it. Mine's gonna be nice and blondy, um, like a nice light goldeny color. So once I've got that, 
I'm going to put a couple of more beautiful little pops of, of highlights definitely in this in this front area maybe a little streak coming down her her little face maybe in front yeah that's cute i like the little straggly pieces hanging here and there and everywhere and then i'm going to just add a couple more of these brighter pieces along the top of her head yep there we go we're making we're making her hair come alive with every little stroke that we do but you can see i'm not overdoing it i'm not going in and repainting the entire thing i'm just i'm just adding these bits of sunshine that are just glistening her beautiful golden blonde locks and then i will add one final little touch with the with the white just to give those um bits of beautiful bright sunshine yeah that's pretty and then i'm gonna put a little bit of white on my brush i might go a little bit slower with my white just to make sure that i have it in exactly the right the spots that i want i definitely want it over here glistening on the front of her head something like this couple of little and this is this is my final highlights right now i'm i've just got a bit of white on my brush i'm not overdoing it i'm just kind of adding it into these little edges that might be along you know her face i'll probably add a little bit you know throughout the rest as well but this is just kind of selling the story of that that sun being over on that side and giving it a whole bunch of pretty highlights. Maybe she's got a little bit in through here, maybe on these little pieces coming over here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wanna have this hair someday. And then um, maybe, maybe a couple on this edge over here. Yeah, this is pretty. I'm digging her hair. All right, sorry. <laughs> Maybe we just paint the things that we want to have in our own life. <laughs> My hair is um, just a mess and, and I, I wish it was as, you know, I don't know, naturally pretty as hers in through here. All right, so then what we're gonna do, we have one tiny little step left to go and it's gonna be with our, um, our small brush. So once you have your hair in whatever direction and whatever messiness that you would like or neatness that you would like, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the last step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I am gonna sign my, I usually sign mine bottom left, bottom right. I think this one I'm gonna sign in the bottom left. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using black paint. I do my initials but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like to be your identifying mark is totally fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful oceanic, be beautiful lady. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.